Hi friends! Let's think about the organization and structure of the United Methodist Church. Now I know it's not the most exciting or inspiring topic, but it's important for us to understand the way the church works and to understand the vocabulary of the denomination. This graphic shows you the basic structure of the denomination, and you'll see that the foundation of it all is the local church. The local church is the primary place where ministry happens. Local churches in a geographical area are organized into districts. Districts in a geographical area are organized into annual conferences. Annual conferences in a geographical area are organized into jurisdictional conferences. And the general conference is the governing body of the entire denomination worldwide. The General Conference and the Jurisdictional Conferences meet every four years. The next round of meetings is in 2024. The primary role of the Jurisdictional Conference is to elect and appoint bishops to the annual conferences. The annual conferences meet every year, of course, and the bishop of the annual conference, in consultation with the district superintendents, is responsible for appointing clergy to serve local churches. This system of clergy moving from church to church, being appointed by a bishop, is called itinerancy. Every clergy person's appointment is one year at a time. So every year, a clergy person is either appointed to a different church or reappointed to the same church. This graphic shows you how Ohio is organized into conferences and districts. The colorful side is the West Ohio Annual Conference and its districts. That's the conference that we are in. You can see that there are eight districts in the West Ohio Conference. Our district is the Capital Area South District. So you can see that we are on the edge of the district and of the conference. This graphic shows you all of the annual conferences and jurisdictional conferences in the United States. You can see that Ohio is part of the North Central jurisdiction, which extends all the way to the Dakotas. What I hope you can see from all of this is the connectional nature of the United Methodist Church. In fact, we often call the denomination the connection. And that means that local churches are not out there doing ministry all on their own. But we are connected through this structure so that we can do more together than we could do by ourselves. This connectional structure not only enables us to share resources across the denomination, but it also enables us to reach out in mission, historically through schools, universities, and hospitals, and of course through the United Methodist Committee on Relief, UMCOR for short. One of the things I'm most proud of about West Ohio Annual Conference is that it is always at the top of the list of contributors to UMCOR. The connectional nature of the church also means that every local congregation has a financial responsibility to the denomination. Apportionments is the word we use to refer to every church's fair share of financial giving to support the work of the denomination. Apportionments are calculated by the church's membership and annual spending. In the United Methodist Church, there are four books that are essential. The first is the Bible, the Word of God. The second is the hymnal, the songs that we sing in praise and worship. The third is the Book of Discipline. This book contains all of the rules for our church. It also contains a statement of our history, our constitution, and the articles of religion of both the Evangelical United Brethren and the Methodist Episcopals. And the last one is the Book of Resolutions. The Book of Resolutions contains the United Methodist Church's official position on just about any topic you can think of.
The Book of Discipline is binding, and that means that every church has to abide by it. The Book of Resolutions is not binding, and so that means there's room for various interpretations, understandings, and positions on all kinds of social issues. We could go into a lot more detail, but this is probably enough to cure your insomnia. If you ever have any questions, feel free to reach out to Pastor Bob or to me. Thanks for listening. I'll see you again soon.